Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Each year, Rotary International, uh, throughout the whole organization, changes its leadership. Each president from each club serves a total of one year, and that's it. Uh, in that time, they try to accomplish as much as they can. And with me today, I have two of the outstanding presidents from our district. We have Betsy Chase from Ventura and Scott Nickel from Grover Beach. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start with you, Betsy. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Um, first of all, it's really fun to be here. Thank you so much. And you've done so much for Rotary, so it's, it's a real honor. Um, I guess I was born into Rotary. My dad was a Rotarian uh, in Santa Paula, which is a little town uh, not too far from here. Um, so I was always aware of the good things that uh, the club that did. And I, I was really just a, aware of it a, on a kind of a club member, I think, like most people. But uh, my background, I think I'm probably the only person I know that would have a business card that reads communication consulting for the arts and agriculture. Mm. Oh, people usually go, huh? <laughs> um, but I come from a long line of uh, uh, people who are in agriculture. And that's a big deal in our, in our region. So, sure. uh, and then uh, I've been involved in the nonprofit arts. Uh, I've run a symphony, a theater company, uh, been involved with a museum, and uh, um, through that I've gotten to know a lot of people. And Rotary really is an adjunct of that, isn't it? It's, it's working in the community and getting to know a lot of people. So that's my story, <laughs> quickly. Great, great, thank you. And Scott, how about you? Well, thanks for having me again. Um, I'm with the Grover Beach Five Cities Rotary Club. Uh, I'm a charter member. I've uh, been a member for about 16 years now. Uh, born and raised in San Luis Obispo County, uh, more so in Pismo Beach. Um, my wife and I, we've just celebrated our 20 year anniversary and uh, she happens to be a Rotarian as well. And uh, we both work in real estate. Uh, we work as a team and uh, it's a great life. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very good. So, um, start with you there, Scott. How did you end up becoming a club president? Well, uh, this is actually my third in the third year of being president of our club, uh, so it's, it's not a, a new rodeo for me, but uh, uh, it's just being a small club of 18 members, uh, it comes around every now and then that you have to step up to the plate and be president again, so uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, have another year at it. Wow, so very yes. good. So if you have uh, that few people, um, literally the class of small clubs is about double your size, so you're competing with quite a few clubs that are literally twice as many people as you are. Absolutely, club. we mm. we never let that slow us down. <laughs> <laughs> three years too. Now, how many of those three uh, other ones were you best club? Uh, none of my presidents. <laughs> so uh, this this was my, my uh, third time. So I thought I'd make it a good year for well, that's us. That's so. a charm, definitely. So <laughs> yes. How about you, Betsy? Uh, let's see. I was going to be president uh, about three years ago, but my husband was ill at the time. So um, I uh, thought maybe I wasn't going to have to be president, but no, no, they remembered. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, that's how I came to be president. And uh, my experience is very, very different in that mine is a large club. Right. And uh, so in some ways, I think it's easier than, certainly than the work that a small club, because we've got things that are in motion. Uh, there's a momentum. Uh, the board usually is set for two years. And um, this year we were fortunate enough to be named best club, best overall club in the district, which I think really, I mean, as, as it should be with Rotary, um, it speaks to the club. I just got to be the person that was president this year. Very true. Now there's 74 clubs in our district, so um, you had some pretty <laughs> stiff competition right there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you. good for you. Uh, <laughs> outstanding. Um, what would you say was one of the advantages you had? Uh, as you became president, knowing that you had that support. Was there a team behind you? Was there some mentoring, some development that you had leadership-wise to help you out? Well, I think the, I don't, well, I'll speak for myself. I don't think, I don't care how long you've been in Rotary. Yes, it prepares you for leadership, but the specific leadership of Rotary presidency is just that, it's very specific. And I don't know what I would have done without the, um, the PETS program, mm. uh, the, the, the Rotary um, inspired, or not inspired, Rotary sponsored program that all of us go through because it puts the pieces all together. Um, but in our club, one of the things that we do is, um, it can be monthly, sometimes not that much, but we have a, a past president's lunch 
and it's a marvelous opportunity to um, hear from past presidents what they've done and uh, how they handled problems and so forth. So yes, it's very much so I, I found um, specific training from, from Rotary and then really wonderful teamwork and support from my own club. Great. How about you, Scott? Well, I was fortunate just to have a fantastic club to start off with. Um, we had a really nice, motivated board, a lot of new members on the board, so they were trying to feel their way through Rotary as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, that just added to the excitement of the club. And, um, um, you know, just overall the, the club standing behind you, wanting to do projects, um, kind of self-motivating. So it was nice to have. Well, that was good. Um, did you expect it to be as good as it was, or were there challenges that you faced that you weren't anticipating as a president? This year was actually really smooth for me. Um, we kind of went into it with a, a list of 25 goals that I wanted to complete, and uh, within three months, those, all of those goals had been met. Wow. So at that point, I said, let's roll up our sleeves, <laughs> let's get busy, and let's, let's finish off the year. And uh, it ended up being a fantastic year, and uh, I'm, I'm happy that the club took that uh, best small club and uh, we deserved it and they, they worked hard so outstanding yeah and you Bessie I had it was really interesting the devil is in the details um, as I say the club has there's a lot of momentum for projects but you realize how some people are just um, you just don't know how you would do your club without them and that was the case with our secretary of 12 years hmm. who just needed a break unfortunately took it midway through my year and it's like oh. um, but there's always a silver lining it, it it showed people that this person was doing a job that was way too big yeah. and so it was an opportunity to look at that position and break it into smaller pieces and bring more people in to do that um, so it turned out to be kind of a silver lining sort of a thing another uh, uh, challenge that we had was one of our big fundraisers, or our biggest fundraiser, is we do fireworks show for the city of Ventura. And there was a group that wanted to change the venue. And so that was a real challenge. And I think what, as it turned out, we, we did not change the venue. But what we learned, and uh, we'll talk, I think, a, a bit later on, and that's good communication within your club. Right. And that's something that we're, that we're working on, because we are a large club. We're 110 plus now members. And uh, you know, you've got your board, who knows what's going on, and you kind of assume everybody does, and that's not the case. So we had things that on the, on the face of it was like, oh gosh, what are we gonna do? <laughs> and it turned out to be really good learning experiences. That's very good. Yeah. Well, um, I asked each of you to bring some pictures, so I'm going to start with you there, Scott. Okay. Let's go through your photo set because uh, I think a lot of this, the audience is going to want to see actually what goes on at your club at Absolutely. Gover Beach. Absolutely. So let's start with the first one here. Sure. Um, elementary school. This was a project we did for uh, local ele elementary schools. They all needed uh, world maps, so we stepped up to the plate. We bought about 50 world maps had them all laminated so they can use those for many, many years to come. So that was, that was a, a good little project and uh, That's great. a good community project. Mm -hmm. uh, the second photo here is uh, one of our elementary track meets. Uh, we invite all the elementary kids to the uh, local mm -hmm. high school cool. uh, to participate in a, a full on track meet. So we get anywhere from probably 350 to 450 kids. Wow. So it's, it's a big deal, it's a big community event and it's always always a lot of fun. So how do you man that? Is it Because there's 18 of you, you said? There's 18 of us, <laughs> yes. Well, uh, you know, we work hard, we work fast. <laughs> <If it is. laughs> so, very good. Definitely. Um, and then this, this third photo, this is a, a project, uh, you probably heard of AmpSurf. Uh, every year our club sponsors them with a barbecued lunch. Uh, this is AmpSurf is a program where uh, people who have lost limbs are taught how to surf. So it kind of gives them an empowerment. Oh, gotcha. uh, hmm. A lot of these folks um, are military uh, veterans. Uh, so it's always always fun and a pleasure to, to help them out. That is great. And you do this as an annual event? Every year. Wow. You bet. Wow. Good for you. That's a great project. Yes. And then this other... Uh, Photo is uh, part of our club members. We do a uh, annual uh, bandstand every month. Or it's, actually, it's every week uh, during the <laughs> summer. So we man the beer and wine booth. So it's a ah, great fundraiser for us and a good way popular. to expose ourselves to the community. That is great. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Uh, and then, uh, of course, this photo is our Christmas party that we put on for the uh, local Boys and Girls Club. So we all rally and, and uh, bring Santa down and have goodies and, hmm. you know, cakes and cookies for the kids as well as presents. So you actually sponsor that one? Is that specific to your club then? Yes, it is. Wow. That's, Absolutely. That's a, another huge project. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, this other one is just another marketing um, uh, idea that we have for our club. Mm -hmm. Um, we give out cards uh, that say you've been noticed. Okay. Um, just trying to introduce Rotary to people, possible potential members. Uh, just a nice casual way to invite them to our club. Um, so that's been very successful to us. I see on the uh, card though it says Santa Barbara Sunrise. Have you guys borrowed that one? Uh, that is not ours, no. <laughs> so that is a different card, but uh, that's a great project as well. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, Rotary always likes sharing. I Absolutely. Mean, that's what they, you successes you better use. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, every month we do a monthly cleanup day on the streets of Grover Beach. So okay. we always like to uh, be involved in that and keep our community clean. And it's a good way to expose ourselves to people driving around. So now, Have you had any uh, recruiting opportunities from that? Has that helped you out? or? We, we haven't had any recruiting opportunities, but it's always nice when people drive by and honk at you and that's say nice. thank you. So that's, yeah. that's really all we, we need. That is know? very good. Uh -huh. kind of self-motivating. Right, right. Um, and then, of course, this is one of our board meetings where we're hard at work to <laughs> solve the world's problems. I see that. Yes. Uh, all now non-alcoholic, I noticed also. No, so uh, yes, business absolutely. Gets done. <laughs> Just business, strictly. Okay. Uh, so this is a picture of uh, Mark Meininger. He is a, a soldier, brand new to the Air Force, so we uh, implemented and adopt a serviceman program. Oh. So uh, he's a young man that came from a, a difficult upbringing. Uh, his wife, Robin, they're brand new newlyweds. So before he was uh, shipped off to boot camp, we were able to get them together, uh, give them a night's uh, stay at Madonna Inn with a nice dinner, just kind of a send off for them because they really did not have uh, any type of honeymoon. So that was, that was great for our club. And he actually recently just came back to visit our club uh, dressed oh, nice. in his uh, Air Force finest, and he had some really nice badges, and uh, he's turned out to be a fine young man. That's so great. Now, how did you identify him or find that? Uh, just one of our members. We put it really? out to our memberships to find somebody, and I believe she went through the church and, and found uh, him. So, okay. uh, yeah, it's a really nice program. That is great, and that's partnering, too, with the community. So Absolutely. Outstanding program. Absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, we have our pins for polio. It's our bullathon. Uh, strictly, all the funds go to uh -huh. Polio Plus <laughs> okay. program. So it's a, it's a lot of fun, and it's always nice to get the community uh, that really doesn't know anything about polio, mm -hmm. and uh, they get educated as well. And that's a fundraiser, then also. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, funds go to Polio Plus. I would all of it. One hundred percent. Great. Yes. Great. And how much do you raise from that one? Uh, we raised about twenty five hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so that's very good. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, once you put those bowling shoes on, <laughs> it's all fun from there on. <laughs> right. <laughs> hmm. uh, and then, of course, uh, our police and firefighter first responders appreciation lunch that we hold once a year. Uh, just a nice way to say thank you for those who are putting their life on the line for us every day. Got it. Yeah. And the location of this picture is actually where? This is actually at the Grover Beach Fire okay. House. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And so you host the event right there and yes. actually run it. Exactly. Good. Yes. Good. And then these are just other random shots of some of our uh, projects. Um, barbecuing at the uh, Ramona Gardens Park. We do a Halloween carnival okay. and trunk or treat for the kids. So free <laughs> hot dogs and just a safe way to uh, do some Halloween uh, trick or treating. Very nice. Yes. Very nice. Um, you have a picture here. Uh, you guys bundled up here, it looks like. Yes, this is uh, about 6.30 in the morning, uh, thanks, Thanksgiving Day, we uh, help out with the local turkey trot, which is a, uh, I think it's a 5K run, so we get out there and help them organize it. So. <laughs> I can't believe it's that cold up there. A little chilly, but uh, <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> it looks like fun. Yes. And then, of course, uh, the last photo here is uh, us giving uh, monies out to different organizations through our club. So. Outstanding. Yes. Oh, that's good. So how did your club take uh, the notice that you guys were best small club? They were excited. Uh, extremely pumped. Like I said, we worked really hard year-round. Uh, we had three goals. One was to 
uh, motivate the club. One was to be busy, and the third one was to be the best ball club. So uh, uh, collectively, we made that happen. But that's outstanding. That, that is great. And uh, of the 18, did you um, have any attrition? Did you bring anybody new in? I think we were plus one, but good, uh, good. one member. But uh, you know, it, it kind of ebbs good. and flows. Oh but yeah. Uh, yeah. at the end of the year, we. Uh, completed about 50 different projects. So. <laughs> wow. That's outstanding. Yes. One thing I have noticed is that um, the successful clubs like yours, having a good time, there's uh, a minimum amount of attrition. People actually don't leave. They're having too good of a time to leave. So they make all excuses to stick around and work. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so good for you. Thank you. Betsy, let's jump into your pictures now. All right. Okay. So the first one we have there is a... Uh, looks like a firework. It's, it it is. looks like the fireworks. It is. And the reason I think we started with that is because really the fireworks, which is our biggest fundraiser, uh, we do it for the city of Ventura and we have from six to 8,000 people wow. attend, so it's a big deal. But from that, um, that's our major fundraiser from which all of our other uh, community projects. And at the end of the year, we probably do cash gifts to about 30 different nonprofits. Wow. So it's it's really important. But we also have some what I would call a, or a passive fundraiser. Um, you've been to our club and had some of our wonderful turkey lunch, or turkey, I wish, <laughs> chicken lunch. Um, right. But we have a, a placemat, and the placemat has right. business cards and so forth. So uh, we raise about, gosh, about 6000 just right. on the placemat. Wow. So it's, you know, when you consider how hard it is to raise money, that's, that's one that's kind of great. But um, there's, as I say, it, th that from that really springs, you know, all of, all of the other activities. Now, one of the challenges I see with the 4th of July is that in Rotary, you start on July 1. So how do you, yes. as a president, how do you get exactly. rolled into that one? Well, um, usually it just depends on how involved the, the new president is. Um, but you know, we, in my my predecessor or my successor and I were you know we're both there. So okay. you know, well, that's good. but but uh, you know, the work obviously is done by the committee, by the committee. and and I think that brings up an important part. Mine, as I mentioned, is a big club. We're 110, and it it is such a matter of of committee work. Um, you know, I, the, there's always, you know, the, the 4th of July committee starts working, oh gosh, eight months before the event. Right. And as a president, you know, you're just checking in. But, you know, we couldn't possibly do uh, all of the things that our club does without the fact that, you know, it's not just being a matter of being on a committee, but it's taking ownership. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really exciting. Wow, yeah. great. Next picture you have is a picture showing uh, the crowds, I would yes, say. Yes, yes, um, the multitudes. Is that from the 4th of July? It is. Those are okay. from the 4th, 4th of July. And okay. we have, you know, vendors. We have a kid's zone. Oh, okay. Um, no alcohol. And uh, which is, um, you know, goes to show you can you can have a good time without <laughs> with alcohol. That is so, good. So, yeah, yeah. And you said about 6,000 people actually. Right, yeah, 6,000 to 8,000. And what time does it open? Yeah, um, we start uh, about 5 o'clock. Okay. Uh, the gates open and and, uh, and then, of course, fireworks about 9. Right. So, and about yeah. how much do you figure you make in profits? Well, it, it depends, but we, we usually um, bring in from 30 to 50,000. Nice, nice. You know, so it's a, it's a big deal. That yeah. is good. And it all yeah. goes back to community. It all goes standing. back to the community, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then in, uh, the next picture, again, same crowds. I would. Uh, yep. Anticipate. More crowds. Yeah. Okay. Is that the same venue? Or? It is. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then you have uh, another picture here showing coats. Yes, that's really a, a, a project that's had amazing legs. The, the, the simple part of it, it's coats for kids. Oh. Started in 2011, and since that time, um, we have given away about 10,000 coats. Wow. And it's not, it, it started as collecting coats because we too have a Christmas party. We do um, three schools on the west side of Ventura, and it starts with picking them up uh, with a bus and taking them. Um, this year it was to, uh, to Target, <laughs> and uh, um, they get a shopping spree. And the, the parents will let us know what particular things so that we're not getting okay. stuff that the family doesn't need. And uh, then we usually go up to um, the, the uh, school district office in Ventura and have lunch and Santa Claus mm -hmm. comes and the children get to choose a coat. Oh, and we also have something as a part of that, it's called Furry Friends and they get a stuffed animal. And these kids, 
um, usually go home with more than one coat and one more than one animal yeah. because they're taking it to the brother or sister right. that they know needs it as well. But it's interesting because, if I may, jump to another Coats for Kids picture. It shows sure. um, the cleaners that, de he, that one of our Rotarians, Sunny Shaw, has for all these years cleaned all of these coats. Mm. And that was also the outgrowth of another project which takes clothes for people who want to get back into the workforce. And so Sunny also cleans all of those. So that's been one of our vocational projects as well, you know, is, is to do that. Well, that's great. And I do notice um, it shows a picture of a box there. So he has a collection area yes, at we each have, of his locations. Right. Not only there, but we do, you know, boxes at the nursery. We, we do them all over the county. And uh, so it's a, it's a big deal. And, uh, do you have a guesstimate on how many coats come through there? Well, as I say, he, he's done cumulatively almost 10,000. Oh my gosh. Um, but, and then, um, <laughs> it is, it, it is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And, uh, you know, talk about service above self. That is a very big example of it, is what this, what this individual does. And as I mentioned, the fact that it, it went beyond and also uh, was also helping people get back True. in the workforce. Yeah, that yeah. So that's really cool. Great. Yeah. You have another picture here. Um, doesn't look like it's too local here. So. No, that's that. As a matter of fact, um, is our um, our, uh, our uh, interactors, our, our our big kids. Okay. And uh, this is a, um, a a group basically interact, and you're going to have to help me with the ages, but it uh, go, usually goes up to. Interact is high school, and then Rotaract, I think. You okay, have so th then in I've mixed them the young up professionals. because there, there, there's both Interactors and Rotaract, right, but it's right. basically a, a then it's a Rotaract okay. group, and this is our Baja build out, oh, okay. and uh, they've gone down to the same area and, and worked on a school. So, um, but the international aspect is is big for our club. We have some people that we're lucky because one of our Rotarians actually has a small uh, foundation. And so he's very nimble about, for instance, when the earthquake happened in Nepal. He was able with another couple of our Rotarians to go to Nepal. And what they do is, it's not that they, it's a huge foundation, but that they, they, um, they know how to use the money. And that is who better knows than the community that's been struck. True. And so they uh, interview people within the community, what do you need, and then they buy as locally as they can. Uh, so that's been exciting. And then another um, international product project that we have done um, is um, in Guatemala, and it's a, a health clinic. Okay. Uh, and again, it's there was a, a young doctor from the area that was already going down. So it was a marvelous partnership um, within the community. Oh, that so great. yeah, that, that's really great. My uh, governor classmate, just to let you know, uh, Jose Moreno, actually is now on the cabinet. He's the, uh, the Minister of Health in Guatemala. Oh, well, they <laughs> so, may, we may be working Let me them. know. Yeah, yeah, we'll pull that string yeah. anytime we need to. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. And then your next picture, um, dictionary looks like. Yes, it is. This is a very happy young man. Um, we've done the dictionary project for many years. And it's interesting because so oftentimes people are saying, really, a paper? Real, you know, a book? Shouldn't they be getting iPads or whatever? Well, our school district isn't able to do that. So the dictionary project is still very viable. And uh, each year we give out about 1,700 dictionaries. And they're not just dictionaries. I mean, they are magical books. Um, and we do them in both Spanish and English. Um, one of the things that the kids always enjoy is they turn to the back because it has the longest word in the oh, dictionary. Okay. And don't ask me what it is because I can't remember. <laughs> but this, is, this has been an ongoing project. Um, but we've, um, it's interesting how projects start and then expand. Um, for instance, one of the things that through the dictionaries, um, we were able to start doing more with our sister clubs. There's two other clubs in our area. And uh, so we started doing projects. We had a Christmas party, which is always good to start, you know, get to know one another. And then one of the big deals in Ventura for the city is there is a, um, a botanical garden that's, right. that's starting. Right. And so we are raising a quarter of a million dollars to cre create Rotary Plaza. Wow. And so the three clubs got together and we did a cleanup on the trail and uh, um, have committed obviously a lot of money. Uh, but it's such a great thing because that particular day, here were all of us rotor Rotarians, you know, chopping away weeds, and there was a 5K run that was going on, and then there was something else with animals, so we had dogs and kids and Rotarians. 
and a sign that says, you know, Rotary at, at work. And one of the things that um, that happened this year that was really fun, we actually had a theme, and that was the power of us. And uh, so we're thrilled to bring that to the community. Great. Yeah. Uh, outstanding. So now that you're both done, and we're looking at this year now, it's a new, new Rotary year, how are you going to benefit your club? Have you thought about that? Scott, I'll start with you. Well, of, of course, I'm on the board, so um, just being a part of it, I think, just uh, continuing on with the projects, making sure um, that the club's you know, still going in the right direction. But uh, like I said, the club's pretty much self-motivating right now, sure. so um, mm -hmm. if there's a project, people are going to jump on board Good. and uh, they're, they're going to be motivated. <laughs> How about you, Betsy? Well, I would certainly agree. Though this morning when I put my pins on, the first one I put on was my past president's <laughs> pin. So well it, earned. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's a it's a big deal. It it's is. a it's a big responsibility, and and not only to your club, but you know your community, your family is going. Excuse me, what? You're going yet again another Rotary project. <laughs> But I, I, I would agree with Scott. It's, um, you know, you, yes, you suddenly step back, but, you know, we, we, we've got some tribal memory and it's important that we uh, continue on. Our club, for instance, will be in, in um, 2019, we're 100 years old. Yeah. And uh, so, and th that's a big part of my um, interest is keeping that history alive, so. 100 years, I mean, you think about that, what Rotary's done, um, both your clubs, the impact in the communities. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. And what you both have achieved doing these projects is, again, uh, I, would, I would say something outstanding. It's almost supernatural how much you guys <laughs> actually did to tie into those communities. Um, got time for one quick question. I want to make that short and sweet for each of you. What do you do with the incoming president? The one that's do you, do you help them out? Do you, do you motivate them? Do you offer them any advice or do you just kind of watch them do their thing? Well, m my incoming president, in, and she and I are very different. I'm kind of a little da 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 da, -da and she's like, we will get <laughs> things done, and she does get things done. So I just, I'm a, um, a sounding board, and, um, but, but I mean, she is so prepared, thanks again to the kind of training that Rotary gives us. She hit the ground running. Yeah. And so I can just kind of like, <laughs> woohoo, you, you know, and enjoy it. Oh, you Scott, real quick. Well, we're always there to support her. Um, we had her over for dinner prior to her taking over as club president and kind of discussed her goals and just gave her the support and let her know that we're, we're always there. And we always kind of keep tabs on her. Yeah. But like Betsy said, she's, she's well informed and uh, she's, she's ready to take on the new year. Well, well, thank you both of you for uh, joining me today. And thank you for the outstanding work you did as president. Thank Wade, you so thank much. you. With that, thank you very much. Uh, we hope to see you next time.